All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to upload files via FTP using Dreamweaver. Now, I've got Dreamweaver CC opened, but this process has pretty much been the same since clear back to CS5. So whatever version you have, you should be able to follow along. Now, I want you to notice first over here in the files panel. Right now, my files panel just shows me my hard drive. I have my different drives that I have mounted, my desktop folders and whatnot, and uh, just note that this is going to change when we set up this file. So the first thing we need to do inside of Dreamweaver is set up what's known as a site definition file. And we do that by heading to site, new site. And this is a file that Dreamweaver stores locally on your computer that just helps Dreamweaver keep track of where your site root is and some of those FTP credentials so you don't have to type those in every time. So the first thing it's asking us for here is the site name. I'm just going to call this Andrew's site. This uh, name doesn't really have any configuration value or setting whatsoever. It's just a local name. You can name this whatever you want. Uh, and then the second setting is the local site folder. So this is saying, where is your site root? So I'm going to go to my desktop. I'll choose that site root folder and hit choose. So I've told Dreamweaver where my site root is. And now we can move over here to the servers tab. And this is where we set up a new FTP connection. So I'm going to click the plus button here. It's a little hard to see right there to add a new FTP server. So I'm just going to call this, this is the same as before, andrewwilson.org. The address is a demo for me. It's demo.andrewwilson.org for you. It's likely just going to be your domain name, my username, and then finally the password. And a handy feature inside of here is you can click this test button to double check to see if it's actually going to work. And if you get this successful message, then you're good to go. Now, as before, this root directory is very important. If I don't put it in, it's going to connect to the wrong directory on the server. So for student web hosting, this should be public underscore HTML. This is really important if you're using Dreamweaver because Dreamweaver automatically uses the root directory to upload to, and it's a little trickier to pick your directory. So make sure that's in place. Go ahead and retest and hit OK. If FTP doesn't work, switch to SFTP and try that uh, as an alternative. All right, let's go ahead and hit save here. And Dreamweaver will now save this file right here in my servers. And that's pretty much all I need to do. I don't need to worry about the version control or the advanced settings. Now watch what happens as soon as I hit save. So I'm gonna click save here and notice that the files panel suddenly changed. It's now showing me only the files inside of my site root directory. So that's what a site root file does for you inside of Dreamweaver. All right, let's go ahead and look at just a couple quick settings here for uploading. Now, Dreamweaver uses these buttons right up here to upload and download. The first one is how you connect to the server. So first, I'm just going to select this option to connect to the server there, and it'll try to make a connection. Sure enough, now I'm connected. The second option just is a refresh. It refreshes in case I've changed the file name on the computer and I need to update the file name here. This is called get. It's basically your download. This is called put. It's your upload. And then these options over here are working with uh, synchronization, there's a synchronized file. There's also some options for working when you, if you're doing uh, Git or version control, you can work with these. I recommend shying away from all of these. Synchronize may have some adverse effects if you're not uh, familiar with how it works. It tries to basically make your server and your local copy the same, and it may overwrite a file on one or the other that you don't want it to do. So be careful with that. I recommend just sticking with the upload and download. Now it's a pretty easy process. In order to upload, all you need to do is click the Upload button. So you simply just select a file. I'm going to click this file called Index, and I would just click the Upload arrow. Now, in my instance, I need to make one change because on my remote server, I'm saving everything inside of this demo uh, to, to illustrate this. So in order to make that work, I'm going to go back to, say, Site, Manage Sites. I'll double-click my existing site I just set up. I'll come back into the servers, double-click the server, and I need to change this to public underscore HTML slash demo because I want all of my files to go inside that demo folder. You shouldn't need to do this. Now I'll go ahead and hit save, save, and done. And then I'm going to reconnect here. And I'm going to move back to my local view. Okay, so local view is the view of the files on your computer. Remote view is the view of the files on the server. So I'll switch over to local view and I'm just going to select this index file and click the upload arrow and Dreamweaver is going to try to upload it. I'm going to say no, I don't want to transfer dependent files right now. And it will go ahead and upload that. So it just barely uploaded it. I can come over here to my website 
and it should now be here. So here's the file I just uploaded, that index file. Now Dreamweaver can also upload an entire directory. So if I wanted to upload, if this is the first time I'm uploading, I can just select my main site root folder, this main folder, and click upload. And you'll see Dreamweaver is going to say, are you sure you want to upload the entire site? And I would go ahead and select OK, because of course I do. That's what I want to do the first time. Um, so if you select a folder, the whole folder gets uploaded. If you select an individual file, just that file gets uploaded. And it's just like before, there's no undo. So as soon as you upload, it's going to overwrite whatever you have live on the server. So ensure that you have everything properly in place locally. Now I'm going to illustrate one handy feature of using Dreamweaver, and that's when you make updates to pages. So for example, uh, let's say that this page I want to call, this used to be, this is probably called single in the past video, but let's say I want to call this uh, store.html. Now watch what happens when I hit return to rename this file. Dreamweaver pops up and says, hey, you have uh, links to this, in other words, anchor tags in these two pages that are pointing to the old name. Do you want me to automatically update them for you? And I say, oh, thank you very much. Yes, update those. And that will automatically update all of the links in those pages. So now if I double click the index page, I'll just go ahead and illustrate this. I'll move over into the source code right there view so I can see the code. And sure enough, all those anchor tags are automatically fixed. It went and updated them all. It also updated this page itself, the store page. So if I open up the store page, all of those anchor tags are automatically fixed. So that's a really handy feature uh, that will only work if you have a site definition file set up in the first place. So that may be something that uh, you may want to use Dreamweaver for. All right. Uh, lastly, let's look at the, uh, what do I call split view inside of Dreamweaver? I think they call expanded view, but that's this last little button right here. So if you click on the expanded view button, you'll see a little divider line. Over here on the left, you see all the files that are on the remote server. Over here on the right, you see all the files that are on your local machine. So this is kind of helpful in comparing and contrasting. You can see exactly what you have live versus what you have locally. And remember the workflow is always, you just click this button to go back. The workflow is always edit locally, then upload live. So if I needed to make a change to my store page, let's go ahead and double click this to open it up. I'll move over into source code view. And let's say I need to update this and the title is wrong and this needs to be called Andrew's store. So I'm gonna update that title. I'll make the save to that. And then uh, I'll come down here to this button right here. It is, uh, in Dreamweaver, it's called Preview in Browser. You can click the little globe icon and just say Preview in Safari. And this just basically loads up this page in a local browser. And I can see this is definitely a local URL here. And sure enough, this is called Andrew's Store. So that, that worked. So now I need to upload those to my server. So I'll jump back to Dreamweaver here. I'll select that file and I'll click the Upload button. Say no for dependent here. This will upload that change. Now I can jump back to my browser come over here and refresh my index. And now when I click any of these single pages, uh, this will take me over to the the new, uh, what did I call this? Store page. So just as easy as that, that's how you can make those changes. Always get into that workflow, update locally, then upload. And that's a few tips and tricks if you wanna use Dreamweaver to upload your files to a host.